Well, hello. Good to see you this morning. Um, my name is James Sanderson, if we haven't met before, but I'm the evangelism minister here at the Brown Street Church of Christ in Waxahachie, Texas. And we are in a series of lessons on angels. They're having me do this le these series of lessons on Wednesday nights. So I'll go out and try it out on the congregation like I did last night. Then come in my office the next day, work out all the bugs uh, or any mistakes I've made and and then uh, come back and, and do a video on it. So hopefully this is the, the cleaned up version. Uh, but um, we've been at this for three weeks now. I've got one more lesson, Lord willing, next week. Uh, and I got to tell you, this has been a very interesting series of lessons. I've never, I've never done a, a study on angels before. And so this has been really good for me. But I'll tell you what, this week studying the subject of the angel of the Lord. I, I can't remember where I've done so much study on this. I mean, it, it, I have just poured over and poured over and poured over scriptures. So we're going to see what the Bible has to say about this. Now, here's what makes this interesting. The question is this, who is this? Who is this angel of the Lord? And could it be Jesus? Now, so we're going to see some believe that it was, and some believe that it was not. And again, this is lesson number three on angels. So let's go see what the Bible says about this. But let me throw this little advertisement out there just to let you know that you are on my YouTube channel. And if you type in Saving Souls in the 21st Century, you can get on my channel. I've got actually two. They're underneath the same channel, but two different parts to it, I guess. And uh, newer and older videos. But all those videos are on Bible subjects. And there's just subject after subject after subject. And I hope you get on there. And if you like what you see, subscribe to this channel so we can get these lessons out to higher audiences or, or, or to more people. All right. Thank you for doing that. Now, what did we see over the last couple of weeks? And again, if you didn't go through those lessons, I would encourage you to go back on that channel. And find those lessons and watch them because I think they'll be very helpful uh, in, in understanding this whole subject on angels. But in our first lesson, we looked at names of angels. We covered that. And then in our second lesson, we looked at different kinds of angels. And we looked at that. Okay. And those were both very interesting studies. But this week, we're going to look at the angel of the Lord. Now, if you know anything about me, I, w I went to Sunset School of Preaching in uh, Lubbock, Texas, S-I-B-I. And when I was there, Richard Rogers was one of my teachers. And he taught us the book of Revelation. Wonderful man. Very, very knowledgeable in the Bible. Jim McQuiggan was an instructor at Sunset for many years. Now, he had, he had already left there uh, by the time I got there. And... Uh, I've met him many times, wonderful man. We've had some good talks, uh, very knowledgeable in the Bible also. But Richard Rogers, as he's going through Revelation, he would say, well, you know, Jim McGuigan, he believes this, and well, he's wrong. <laughs> and then he'd laugh, you know, uh, and he'd, he'd go back and forth. And, and I got to say, Jim wasn't there to, to you know, to, uh, to defend himself. And uh, I got to tell you that uh, the commentary that I use more than any commentary on the book of Revelation is Jim McGuigan. He is just a brilliant man. But if my memory serves me right, and I'm getting old, 59 years old now, um, my memory, if it serves me right, is that these men disputed on this subject. It seems to me that one of them believed that Jesus was the angel of the Lord, and the other one believed that he was not. Now, Richard Rogers had us do a, a paper, a research paper, on this subject in the Bible. So he wanted us to go in there, really look at the Bible on that. And that was a lot of years ago. So you can see here that there are different beliefs on this subject. Okay? In fact, if you get on the internet and you just Google angel of the Lord, you're going to see that most people believe that Jesus is, in the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord. Over and over and over again. You'll find very few who believe 
that he is not the angel of the Lord. Okay? All right? So, there is the debate. Now, i got to say this, though. The chapter that we're going to look at here in a minute is, a, is chapter 1 of Hebrews. And i got to tell you this. For all the people that believe that Jesus is the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, all the, all the papers and everything I read and articles I read, they never bring up Hebrews 1. For the people who do not believe that Jesus is the angel of the Lord, they bring up Hebrews chapter 1. So let's go look at Hebrews chapter 1. And i got to ask you this question. Is Jesus an angel? Well, let's see. So we're going to go over here to the book of Hebrews. Okay? New Testament. And here in chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, it says, Having become as much superior to angels, this is talking about Jesus, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Now that comes out of Psalm chapter 2, verse 7. So no angels did God ever say that to. But he said it to Jesus. Okay? All right? Interesting. Or verse 5 and 6. Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. It's saying that about Jesus, but not ever saying that about angels. That comes out of 2 Samuel 7, 14 and 2 Chronicles 17, 13. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says that all God's angels worship him. How many angels are to worship him? All of them. That comes out of Deuteronomy 32, verse 43. So angels worship God. Verse 7, of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. And that's a quote out of Psalm 104, verse 4. And then chapter 1, verse 8 and 9 says, but of the Son, he says, of the Son, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with oil of gladness beyond your companions. Again, this is speaking here of Jesus, but not to angels. That comes out of Psalm 104, verse 4. Verse 10. You, Lord, laid the foundations of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment, like a robe. You will roll them up like a garment. They will be changed. But you are the same, and your years have no end. And that's what he said of Jesus. And that comes out of John 1 through, 1 through 3 and Psalm 102, 25 through 27. And to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? He never said that to angels. Who was he saying that to? Well, in Psalm 110, verse 1, he was saying that of Jesus. Now, let's look at the last verse in this section. So what exactly do angels do? Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? So that's the purpose of angels. Now, back to the question. Conclusion. Is Jesus an angel? And the answer is, no, he's not. He is higher than the angels. Is it ever good to place Jesus into a lower position than what he was entitled? And the answer is no. Remember what John 8, 24 says? Jesus says, unless you believe that I am, you have to understand that I am, you 
will die in your sins. He's saying, unless you believe that I'm God, you will die in your sins. And that's the point the Hebrew writer is making. Do not lower Jesus to a lower position than what he is entitled. That's the whole reason that chapter was written. Okay, now here's another question for us. Is Jesus the archangel Michael? We looked at the, the archangel Michael in our last lesson. And the answer is no. <laughs> no. Conclusion. Yet there is a group across the street and around the corner from us that teach that Jesus is the Archangel Michael, just right around the corner from our building here. Okay? Now, for them to get to that point, this is what they have to do with Jesus. I've got their so called translation of their Bible, it sits right behind me on my shelf here. It's called the New World Translation. What they have to do with Jesus to get him to be the Archangel Michael is just to show that Jesus is not God. Okay? And so they change the verses in their Bible to say Jesus is not God. Okay? And so if he's not God, well, they got to do something with him. Well, we'll just make him the Archangel Michael. Right? And see, they have to lower him. Now, what was the first thing that we learned in our lessons on angels back in study one? It was that angels are created by God, right? Psalm 148, verse 1 through 5. That would include the archangel Michael, wouldn't it? Jesus was not created. He is creator. John chapter 1, 1 through 3, Colossians 1, 15 and 18. Go back and read those. He was not created. Therefore, we must be very careful on what we call Jesus. We want to make sure we don't lower him to a level that the Bible does not lower him. Here's another question. When did God start speaking to us through his son? Well, Hebrews is going to tell us that. But look what it says here. Same chapter, but these are the first verses of that chapter. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son. In what days? The last days. Whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. Okay? So, here's a conclusion. If God was speaking through his son in the Old Testament as the angel of the Lord, so Jesus is the angel of the Lord, that's what some believe, then here's my question. How could God have written these verses that he just wrote? Wouldn't he have said, hey, I've been speaking to you all through the Old Testament as the angel of the Lord, my son, and now I'm continuing to speak to you in these last days through my son. But it didn't say that, did it? No, it didn't. So the question is, how could these verses be written if Jesus is literally the angel of the Lord? Just thought. And those are questions for you to think about. Now, here's some different words to think about, okay? And words have meanings in the Bible, all right? So, I want to show you how many times the angel of the Lord is used. Now, there's 19 different stories in the Old Testament of the angel of the Lord. When you come to the New Testament, it changes the word to an angel of the Lord. Okay? And there's 11 different stories in the New Testament about that. Okay? Now, here's a theory. The theory is that Jesus was in the Old Testament, and so when it's used the angel of the Lord, that's Jesus. But when you come to the New Testament, it's not the angel of the Lord anymore. It is an angel of the Lord. Okay? But did you notice something on this chart here? Go back to the first square there. There is one time in the New Testament that the word the, correctly in the Greek, 
the angel of the Lord is used. Here's some other words to consider. There's this word, his angel. Okay? So, this is referring to God. Now, there's four stories in the Old Testament talk about his angels. And there's two stories in the New Testament talking about his angel. And then you have this other phrase in the Bible. God's angel. There's five stories in the Old Testament about God's angel. Okay? So you got the angel of the Lord. You've got an angel of the Lord. You have his angel, which is referring to God's angels. And then you've got God's angel. Okay? Just some words to consider. Now, let's continue. So, again, the theory is when the word the angel is used, the angel of the Lord, Old Testament, this is pointing to Jesus. When it is an angel of the Lord, New Testament, it's not Jesus. That's the theory you can get on the internet and pull up all that. Okay? Question. Now let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 through 25, and let's see how this theory works. Okay? How it fits the Bible. So here's a story about Joseph. Okay? All right? So here's Joseph, and an angel's going to come visit him. Going to bring him a message about Jesus. Now watch what it says here. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, you know what Joseph was going to do. He's not technically married to her yet. Okay? She's pregnant. Okay? So, he's like wanting to get rid of her. All right? Because it's like, it looks like he slept with her and got her pregnant and he didn't. And so, he's contemplating this. Let's get rid of Mary. So, an angel of the Lord appears. Okay? And tells him, wait a minute, this child, it's not from you. It's from God. It's from the Holy Spirit. Verse 21 says, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child, will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God. God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home in his, as his wife. Now, did you notice this? In the top part, it's he, this angel is called an angel of the Lord. Okay? So the theory is, that's not Jesus. But when the word the angel of the Lord appears then that is Jesus. Now, that's the theory, okay? Now, I know, notice I'm using the NIV here, all right? This is not an NIV problem. All the translations are doing this. That is the correct word at the top, on an, or an angel of the Lord, and that's the correct word, the angel of the Lord in the Greek. So this, this, is, this is in all the translations, okay? Here's my point. An angel of the Lord and the angel of the Lord. Right? Do you see that? They are the same. They're the same. Now, here's my question. If Jesus is the angel of the Lord, where is Jesus at this point? He is in Mary's womb. So, you mean to tell me that this angel of the Lord, the theory is that he's the angel of the Lord, is coming and speaking to Joseph. He's saying, hey, uh, that's me over there inside of her womb. And and I'm also talking to you and telling you about me. What? <laughs> that, that doesn't make sense. So my point is this. The Bible is blending an angel or an angel and the angel of the Lord. As the same. So this theory, this kind of debunks this, kind of throws it out the window. 
that if it's the angel of the Lord, it's Jesus, and if it's an angel of the Lord, it's not. Kind of throws it out the window. Here's another one for you. Let's go to Acts 7, verse 30. Now, we're here in Acts chapter 7, verse 30. You've got um, Stephen, and he's preaching, okay? He's preaching to the to the to these Jews, okay? And they don't like what he's saying. Well, he's using Old Testament story after Old Testament story. And watch what it says here. It says, when 40 years had passed. Now, who is this? This is Moses. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame in a bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. Okay? Now, what angel appeared? An angel of the Lord. We'll go back to Exodus and find out who this was. Exodus chapter 3, verse 2, when this story actually happens, it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame uh, of fire from the midst of a, of a bush. So, who was that? In the Old Testament, it was the angel of the Lord. In the New Testament, it says, An angel of the Lord. Which one is that? Are they the same? Sounds like it. Inclusion. So the angel of the Lord and an angel of the Lord seem to be the same. We're trying to separate the two. In fact, I'm not so sure if we couldn't even go farther than that and go the angel of the Lord, an angel of the Lord, his angel, God's angel, if they're not all the same. But we'll continue to see that. So if those that teach that when the Bible uses the angel of the Lord, it is referring to Jesus only. But when a phrase an angel of the Lord is used, it is pointing to someone else, uh, someone who is not Jesus, which is probably some other angels. If this is true, then why does the Bible blend an angel of the Lord or an angel of the Lord and the angel together as being the same? That's my question. So it kind of throws that theory out. Just something for you and me to think about. Now, here's the big question. Does the Bible ever state that Jesus is the angel of the Lord? I mean, if the Bible comes out and says Jesus is the angel of the Lord, then this discussion is over. We don't have to think about it anymore. That's what the Bible said. But did it ever say that? And the answer is... No, there's not a verse anywhere that says that Jesus is the angel of the Lord. Conclusion. Since the Bible never states that Jesus is the angel of the Lord, that makes this belief that he is the angel of the Lord a theory and not an absolute. So think about that. we got to be careful when we come up with theories, okay? Here's another question for us. Why does God use angels to communicate to us and visions and dreams to talk to people in the Bible during Bible times? Why, why does he do that? Well, there's an answer. John chapter 1 verse 18 says what? No one has ever seen God. Who has seen God? No one. 1 John chapter 4, verse 12 says, No one has ever seen God. Who? No one. Here's an interesting verse. In Judges 13, 22, this is uh, Samson, Samson's mom and dad. Judges 13. And Manoah said to his wife, we shall surely die, for we have seen God. Now, they believed they saw God, okay? But what does the Bible say in the book of John? No one's ever seen God. So the question is, did they actually see God? Or did they think they saw God? Well, let's go back and look at this story. Okay, this is an interesting story, and this story is actually going to involve the angel of the Lord. So let's go back and look at Samson's mom and dad. 
Interesting story. Judges 13, 2 through 6. There was a certain man of Zorah, of the tribe of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, here we have the angel of the Lord, okay? Behold, you are barren and have not born children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Therefore be careful and drink no wine or strong drink, and eat nothing unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. No razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb. But he shall... Um, he shall save Israel from the hand of the Philistines. I'm sorry. I can't see behind my picture there. Okay? So this is Samson. So here we have the angel of the Lord appearing to uh, Manoah's wife. Okay? Then the woman came and told her husband, Manoah, a man of God came to me. Now, what did she just say? A man, a man of who? A man of God. So what is she seeing? She's seeing a man. And his appearance was like that of the appearance of the angel of God. So now we have the phrase, an, a man of God and an angel of God. Very awesome. I did not ask him where he was from, and he did not tell me his name. But he said to me, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. So then drink no wine or strong drink. Eat nothing unclean, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Interesting. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, please let the man of God, okay, man, whom you sent come again to us and teach us what we're to do with this child who, was to, who will be born. God listened to the voice of Manoah and the angel of God. Interesting. Now the text is changing from the angel of the Lord to the angel of God came again to the woman as he sat, as she sat in a field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. So the woman ran quickly, told her husband, behold, the man, that's what she's seen in person, who came to me the other day has appeared to me. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man she said and said to him, Are you the man who spoke to this woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now when your words come true, what is to be the child's manner of life? And what is his mission? And the angel of the Lord, who looks like a man, okay, said to Manoah, all of all that I said to the woman, let her be careful. She may not eat of anything that comes from the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink or eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded her, let her observe. Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, kind of going back and forth here, angel of God, angel of the Lord, right? seen as a man, a man of God. Please let us detain you and prepare a young goat for you. And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, If you detain me, I will not eat your food. But if you prepare a burnt offering, then offer it to who? To the Lord. He didn't say offer it to me, because I am the Lord. He said offer it to the Lord. Interesting. For Manoah did not know what he was, that he was the angel of the Lord. He didn't realize it at this point. And Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, What is your name? So that when your words come true, we may honor you. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why do you ask my name, seeing it is wonderful? What's his name? Now, that's an odd phrase here, seeing it's wonderful. 
So I looked at different translations, and most of them say it is wonderful. But the NIV uses this phrase, it is beyond understanding. I looked at another translation, it says, seeing that it is a wonder. So I looked the word up in the Hebrew, and this is what the word means. It means remarkable. But when the King James translates that word, it can be used in one of two ways. It's secret or wonderful. Secret. Beyond understanding. A wonder. Interesting. It's an interesting word. So Manoah took the young goat with the grain offering and offered it on the rock to the Lord, to the Lord, to the one who works wonders, wonders. That's right. <laughs> so the Lord works wonders, right? Wonderful. And Manoah and his wife were watching. And when the flame went up towards heaven from the altar, the angel of the Lord went up in the flame of the altar. Now Manoah and his wife were watching, and they fell on their faces to the ground. Now, if you saw all of this, would you not fall to the ground also? Yes. So he's caught up in the flame, right, and went up towards heaven. So you can see that this angel has come from God very clearly. But the question is, who is it? Well, there they are, and they're just amazed at this whole story. The angel of the Lord appeared no more to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was the angel of the Lord. He knows this angel is from God. And Manoah said to his wife, we shall surely die for we have seen God. Right? Now remember, no one has ever seen God, according to the Bible. But they think they have seen God. And he thinks we're going to die. But his wife said to him, If the Lord had meant to kill us, he would not have accepted a burnt offering and a grain offering at our hands or shown us all these things or now announced to us such things as these. Okay, so that's her explanation of this. So conclusion. So our question is their question. Who exactly is this angel? That's what we're trying to figure out here, right? Well, they're not given an answer. They are just left to wonder. Okay? Now, if they were actually seeing God, okay, here, Jesus. Jesus is God. And if Jesus is the angel of the Lord, and here's my question. Why didn't they die? Because they were not actually seeing God, but they were seeing his angel that he sent as his messenger. And hasn't God been doing that all through the Bible? He has, be, he has sent so many angels to give messages to man. And sometimes he's called the angel, an angel, his angel, God's angel. He's been doing this all through the Bible. Or sometimes just angels. Or as we saw uh, a couple weeks ago, Gabriel, he sent him. Michael, the archangel, they're all bringing messages, right? But that's what they do. So that's my conclusion. Think about this. Think about the seraphim. We saw the seraphim back in Isaiah 6, and they had six wings, and they're hovering over the throne of God in this picture in Isaiah. And what do they do with their wings? They hide their eyes, and they hide their feet, and they fly with the other two. Why are they doing that? Because they are in the presence of God. So we're not here just learning facts about the angel of the Lord. We are literally learning about who this God is. How awesome is this God? Is, is the reason that we can't look upon him is because he is so Full of glory. He is so far beyond us that we can't look at him. Is that why God gives us these pictures of these angels hiding their faces? I think so. 
And so that's why God has to use angels or visions or dreams to communicate with man or prophets because no one has ever seen God. It's because of his glory. And so it makes sense that he would send angels to come down and communicate his message to us. I've got one last question and we'll be done. The problem comes in is, is the, the confusion here is, is that when the angel of the Lord speaks in the Old Testament, he speaks in the first person. He speaks in the first person as God. So when the angel speaks, he's speaking God's words. And so people think that the angel is the Lord. He is the Lord. That is the Lord. So let's go to the story of Hagar, and we're going to see another story on the angel of the Lord. Chapter 16 of Genesis, okay? You know Hagar, you know Abraham had two wives. Uh, he had one wife, Sarah, and then the other wife was the Egyptian, uh, a concubine uh, that became his wife, and they both had children, okay? And the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert because there was problems between Sarah and Hagar. And Sarah kind of ran her off, okay? And so here she is. She's, she's taken off. It was the spring that was beside the road to Sir. And she said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. The angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mis mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will so increase your descendants that they will be too numerous to count. You see the word I here? Now, who has the ability to increase descendants? Only God. Okay. So here's this angel of the Lord. And now this angel of the Lord is speaking in the first person. Can you see that? I. And so the so the thought is, oh, that means that the angel of the Lord is the Lord. He's actually the Lord. Okay? Because he's speaking as he's God. Verse 11 and 12, the angel of the Lord said to her, here's a huge prophecy. You are now a child, and you will have a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. He will be a wild donkey, donkey of a man, and his hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand against him, and he will live in hostility towards all his brothers. Now, this is a prophecy. You know, we fight, and we have wars over here and in other places, but this is where the, the Arabs came from, and they just never seem to take a break. <laughs> They are always at war. This is a, a huge prophecy. This is where Muhammad came from, was from the line of Ishmael. Okay? But you can see here that this is God speaking. So, the theory is, then the angel of the Lord is the Lord. He's speaking. Verse 15. She gave me this name to the Lord who spoke to her. Who's speaking to her? Who's speaking to her? The Lord. Ah, well, if it's the Lord speaking, then it must be the angel of the Lord must be the Lord. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. Oh, so God sees her. So when she speaks back from these words coming from this angel, she is speaking back to who? To God. Conclusion. So is Hagar calling the angel of the Lord uh, the one who is speaking on behalf? Or is, she, or is she calling the one Lord who is speaking on behalf of the Lord? But remember, what do angels do? Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service on the, on, for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? That's what angels do. Here's my point. 
I think this is where the confusion comes from. When a prophet is given the word of God, okay, well, let's just take the book of Amos, for instance, all right? And you get to chapter 4, and it says, I, the Lord said, I, the Lord said, I, the Lord said, or declares the Lord, declares the Lord. That prophet is speaking, and, and it's literally God's words, and it is speaking in the first person. But here's the question. Is the prophet God? No. The prophet is speaking on behalf of God. So do I worship the prophet? Well, we see, no, we don't worship the prophet. The prophet's not God. He's just God's messenger, right? Okay, because we saw this over here with Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. Here's Cornelius. He's blown away from Peter because he's speaking God's words. He bows down to worship and he's like, wait a minute. Don't worship me. You worship God, right? So we don't worship the messenger. The messenger is not God, but they are literally speaking God's words. And next week, if you come back, we're going to see this very clearly when we get into the book of Revelation. This is a deep study. But the point is this. If I'm going to go and tackle this subject, I want to absolutely make sure that we do not lower God to a lower level than what he is. We don't want to take Jesus and lower him down. We saw what the Jehovah Witness do with him, right? And that's wrong. That is bad. Because Jesus says, if you do that, you'll die in your sins. So I want to make sure that we don't do that. And we put Jesus into the position that he is rightly inherited, that he deserves. Jesus is not an angel. And so I'm going to leave it to you. But for me, I'm not going to call Jesus literally the angel of the Lord. Hope this study helped. We're going to continue the study next week, and then we're going to be finished. I love you guys. Hope you've understood this. Go back a little slower and read it. Uh, go through it again if you have to. But definitely a deep study. Hey, we'll see you next time. God bless you. And keep reading your Bible.